What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and I want to introduce you to one of my favorite new gadgets of the year. This is the DJI Phantom 4. This is actually the first drone I've ever used, and it's a pretty expensive investment at $1399. But the great thing here is that it's a highly autonomous drone. So it's very hard to crash it, very hard to lose it, and it's very user-friendly. Now getting to the unboxing, the box itself fits right at home in an Apple store, which is where I picked this up. It's very minimal, all white, with the Phantom 4 on the front. And of course, Around the side, we'll find some of the specs and its compatibility. Now, toward the top, we'll find a nice padded handle. This is actually part of the carrying case within the box. This is what houses the DJI Phantom 4, and we can reuse that. So we're gonna have to slice off the tape in order to open up the box. And inside, we'll find that padded styrofoam box. Let's go ahead and pull that out of the box. And the first thing you'll see here is that it does have some DJI Phantom 4 branding on the outside. Now, of course, this isn't the most sturdy case. If you want something a little more durable, you can go with something else. Now, laying this box flat, you can see we have a latch, which is surrounded by a seal. We can go ahead and peel this off, and the latch is really easy to operate. You just pop it out, twist it, and lift up, and there you go. You have your DJI Phantom 4 and all of its accessories neatly packaged and ready to be unboxed. So front and center is the DJI Phantom 4 with its battery pack and SD card already installed. Now, of course, the blades have been removed, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, the camera and gimbal are cradled with this apparatus, which you can snap off and on, and you want to use this when you repackage your DJI Phantom 4, so you want to keep this. But again, once you remove this, the camera just sort of flops around until you turn it on. Now, the battery pack comes pre-installed and it's pretty easy to remove. You just pinch the clips at the top and bottom to free it up. Once you remove it, you can see that most of the Phantom 4 is just a hollow shell for that battery pack. You can see all the electronics on the inside on the right and left side. We also have warning labels by each motor and you can peel this off once you've read them. Next up, we have the big remote controller, and this is covered in plastic, and it's all folded up for us. So we'll have to unfold it and remove all the plastic, and we'll explore this in just a moment. We also get some essential accessories, like a micro USB cable and a micro USB to USB A adapter. This is used for transferring firmware files from your tablet or phone to your DJI Phantom 4. We also get this DJI microfiber pouch, which houses two sets of blades. So there's a total of eight blades. So if you break one, you have some replacements, and of course you can buy them separately. The blades themselves are wrapped in plastic as well, and you have to peel this off in order to install them. Next up, we have our huge power supply, also wrapped in plastic. Now this power supply has two different connectors. The large connector is for the battery pack for the DJI Phantom 4 drone. The other is a connector for the remote controller. So you can charge both of them at the same time. And lastly, we have our paperwork, which includes a quick start guide, some regulatory and warranty information and everything you need to know about flying a drone and all the warnings that come with it. So taking a close look at the DJI Phantom 4, toward the back we have our battery pack. Of course, we also have our battery status indicator on the back along with our power status. Down below, we'll find our 4K camera, which records video at 30 frames per second. You can record at 1080p at 120 frames per second as well. Now this is a three axis gimbal, which keeps the camera very steady. It also allows you to pitch the camera in any direction. Down below, we'll find a bunch of sensors. This is the vision positioning system. This uses two sonic sensors and two optical sensors. This is used primarily indoors when you lose GPS lock. We'll also find plenty of ventilation and there is a fan that runs in here when you turn on the drone. Along the side we'll find a micro SD card slot and a micro USB port for transferring photos or flashing firmware to your drone. Now they do include a 16 gig micro SD card because there is no internal storage on this device. This drone does feature two front facing optical sensors for sense and avoid technology. So this is able to avoid obstacles in its path and will automatically adjust to avoid them. Now this only works in the forward motion. So if you're going side to side or backwards, you could still run into things. Each motor also features LED lights and this is used to determine orientation and status of your drone. So the two LEDs on the front of the drone are illuminated in red in flight. And this indicates the forward direction or forward position of your drone. The two lights on the back should be illuminated in green, which indicates the rear direction. These lights are also used to communicate status of the drone. So for example, if you need to connect your remote control to the drone, they'll flash in yellow. Now, if you look closely at the motors themselves, you can see the fastening mechanism for the blades, and it's pretty simple. In order to fasten them, all you have to do is push down and twist, and those indicators are on the blades themselves. Now, to make it easy to determine which blade goes with which motor, the blades themselves have color indicators on the top. The black rings go with the motors that have the black dots on the motor mounts. Now, for the silver ones, you have no dots on those mounts. They're just white. Now, if you look at the bottom of the landing gear, it has this nice 
nice rubber foot. So when you land your drone, you don't scratch it up. Now taking a look at the remote controller, it's quite large. It's almost as large as the drone itself. So we have two antennas on the back. This is a 2.4 gigahertz appliance. So it operates on the digital frequency for remotely controlling your drone in addition to feeding live video. So on the top, we have our left and right joysticks, and this is used for flight. So the left stick is used for altitude in addition to pivot. So you can pivot in place or raise the height or lower the height of the drone. We also have the right stick, and the right stick is used for directional flight. So if you want to go forward or back or side to side, that's what you use. We also have this return to home button. This is a very useful button. So if you lose sight of your drone, before it takes off, it records its GPS home location. So if it receives the command to return home, it will actually fly itself back to that location. Now it doesn't return exactly to the same spot it took off from, but it gets you in the ballpark and allows you to regain access to it once it's in your location. Also along the back edge on the left side is our gimbal dial. This allows us to pitch the camera up and down. Also on the left side is a record button for recording video and on the right side, we have a pause button for pausing video playback or video recording, and we also have a show to release for taking a photograph. Also along the bottom are these two customizable buttons. Now by default, the C1 button pivots the gimbal straight down so you can see quickly what's below you to land your drone without issue. And then the C2 button is used for camera settings. We also get two USB connections, a standard USB connection and a micro USB connection. Now this connection is used for connecting your devices. So for example, in my case, I'm gonna use an iPad and this connects via a lightning cable. Now the remote controller requires the use of an app that runs on either an Android or iOS device. And that it could be a tablet or a smartphone. So we have this big armature that folds out and allows you to resize it for either a tablet or a smartphone. So if it's a tablet, of course you wanna expand it out. Now this is, works great for an iPad Air or an iPad Pro 9.7 inch. You're not gonna get an iPad Pro 12.9 inch in here. Now if you're gonna use a smartphone, there are two clips at the bottom that you can fold out that allows you to resize it for a smaller screen. Next up, we are ready to start flying. Now to power on the drone, you double press the power button and hold on the second press until you hear a tone. It will run through a diagnostic and warm up sequence and you'll see the motors twitch. We also have to power on the remote control the same way. So you double press the power button holding on the second press until you hear it click on. And lastly, we need to connect our mobile device and activate the DJI Go app. So next up, we need to start the motors. In order to do that, you can pull back on both joysticks toward the center and this will activate the motors. Now it'll stay on the ground until you actually change the altitude. So once you increase the altitude, you're flying off the ground. Now, if you don't have GPS lock, this thing will tend to wander, but if you have GPS lock, it'll actually stay in place and it's pretty rock solid. Now, in order to turn off the drone, you just have to land it. So you pull back all the way on the left joystick until it lands and it lands softly thanks to its vision detection system. And then you continue holding until it powers off the motors. So in terms of the live video feed, you can go about 500 meters, but you really want to maintain line of sight with the drone, even if you can't really see it. Uh, you just want a clear path to the drone so there's no interference with your radio signal. Now the drone is smart enough. So if you get too far away and you lose radio contact, it automatically sends itself back home. And again, before it takes off, it records its GPS home location. So it knows which way home is. And again, it has all these sensors to avoid obstacles on that trip back home. Now in terms of video quality, it's really smooth and we have 4K resolution. So we're able to see a lot of detail, especially with those wide high altitude shots. It's actually kind of unreal. Even on a windy day, the camera is is so stable that it actually looks like it's just parked up there on top of a building or on top of a crane. Now the camera quality is so good that on a sunny clear day at a high altitude, I can actually see the buildings of downtown Detroit, which is 40 miles from where I live in Rochester. Now in terms of low light performance, it's definitely not the best camera in the world. You're gonna see a lot less detail and quite a bit more noise, uh, but you're still able to get some interesting results in low light conditions, especially from a high altitude. Now in terms of obstacle avoidance, it works pretty well in most situations. Situation, so it's able to see buildings or large solid trees. But when it comes to certain other trees with more wiry branches, it doesn't always see them. In fact, a few trees in my yard got clipped by the drone because obstacle avoidance wasn't able to see some of the branches sticking out. So you have to be pretty careful in certain situations. It's not entirely foolproof, but it actually works pretty well. Next up, I'm gonna try and take a quick look at the remote control app for the drone itself. So you can see right now I have a live video feed from the drone. And since it's right in the house, right now it doesn't have a GPS lock or a reliable GPS lock but you can see up here we have all these status indicators which tells me the reception of the GPS antenna as well as the remote
remote controller, the quality of the video feed, as well as the battery life. You can tap on these to expand them out to find about more details or change the settings. Uh, same with the image transmission settings, so you can change this. You can see the frequency it's using, that sort of thing. Now, in terms of the video feed, it is about 720p at best, uh, but there is a lot of color distortion. So really, it's just in order to see what you're filming, not the actual quality. The actual quality is much better than what you see live on the tablet. But you can also see all of your camera settings. You have your camera controls right now. You have your current GPS location, your orientation, flight, speed, and altitude. Now, in terms of operating the camera, it's somewhat similar to using a smartphone. So when you tap on the screen, this locks exposure to that specific point. If you want to release it, you have to hit the X icon. You can also see that we have video or still camera mode. So if you want to take a photograph, you just snap your photograph, takes it, records it directly on the DJI Phantom 4, and then we can record our video. So this records video again directly to the SD card in the Phantom 4, like so. Uh, and then when you're done recording it, you can actually play it back over wireless to your tablet. So it's not recording on the tablet, it's just recording on the drone, and you can access it live from the drone. Next up, I'm going to take a look at some of the automated flight modes that we can pick from. So we have normal right now, which basically means that this is being controlled by the remote controller, but we have some of these automated flight modes like tap fly. So if we pick tap fly, we can go through tutorial if we want, but it's pretty basic. So I'm going to go ahead and click exit. Uh, so if we're in flight and we see a building we want to fly to, all we have to do is tap it on the screen and it will go directly to that and you can also change its speed. So you can go all the way up to 22 miles per hour. We also have active track and this is somewhat similar to tap to fly but in this case it's actually able to follow the subject that you're tapping on. And if it sees any obstacles in its flight path it will try to avoid them. We also have these intelligent flight modes and that includes point of interest. So we can specify a specific point that the craft can fly around. So we can specify a specific speed and altitude and it will automate that action which is kind of nice because you can't really Really do that uh, using the manual controls. We also have follow me. This is pretty self-explanatory. This will actually follow your location as you're walking. So either you're driving or you're biking or just walking, the drone will follow you and keep the camera locked on your location. And of course, it will avoid obstacles if it detects any. We also have home lock. And this is great if you lose sight of your drone. So if you pull back when we're in home lock, this will automatically take it back to its home location. And if you push forward, this will drive it away from the home location. So you don't need side of it and you don't need to worry about its current orientation. We also have course lock. This is somewhat similar to home lock but basically this locks the trajectory of the drone. So if you want to fly in a straight line while being able to move the camera around side to side without changing your direction, you would use course lock. Next up, let's check out the general settings panel. And these are broken down into these tabs. So we have main controller settings, we have our visual navigation, the remote controller, our video feed, our battery settings, our camera settings, and our advanced settings. Now, under main controller settings, we have our multiple flight modes, which is off by default. You can turn this on, but we have those three positions available from a switch on the back of the remote controller. Now, if you have this on, you probably want to spend most of your time in the P position, which uses all of its sensors in order to avoid obstacles, to find its current GPS location, and that sort of thing. But if you want to go ultra fast, we have sport mode, which turns off all of those sensors and allows you to get up to a 45 mile per hour maximum speed. And then we also have A, which is added mode, which also turns off most of those sensors to give you a lot more flexibility. Next up, we have maximum flight altitude, which is by default 120 meters. So if you want to go higher, you can change that right here. You can also enable max travel distance. So by default, I think it's 100 or 30 meters, so it doesn't let you go very far. Uh, and you can turn this off entirely so there's no restriction in terms of distance it can travel. But you can see it can travel all the way up to 3,000 meters in terms of restriction. Uh, but of course, you're likely going to lose radio contact. Uh, anyway at a distance beyond 400 meters or 500 meters uh, unless of course you're using one of the automated flight modes. Another neat feature now available is YouTube or Facebook live streaming. So you can stream live video from the drone to those services using this app. Now in terms of obstacle avoidance, we have quite a few visual navigation settings to take a look at here. So we can turn on forward obstacle sensing and this will explore exactly how this works. But in terms of those automated flight modes such as tap and fly, active track, 
and a few others, you can see that we can enable a horizontal obstacle avoidance. So if you send it to a, a location using tap and fly, this will actually avoid obstacles and fly around them. And with active tracking, if the subject is actually approaching the aircraft, this will actually allow it to fly backwards to avoid it. So generally speaking, the DJI Phantom 4 is extremely easy to use, but there is a learning curve. You want to make sure you understand the limits of your drone, you understand the settings of your drone, and you don't want to make any assumptions about the drone's behavior in any given situation. So you don't want to just fly it into something assuming obstacle avoidance is going to work because your settings may not be set correctly. Uh, so just be cautious and make sure you fully understand how the drone works before you are more adventurous with it. The only other thing I would recommend is purchasing a second or third battery because the battery doesn't go very far. It goes about 20, 25 minutes depending on how you're using it. The more aggressively you're using the drone in flight, the quicker it blows through the battery. And once the battery reaches a certain threshold, about 30%, it starts limiting its functionality. So definitely keep some extra batteries around if you plan to use this more extensively. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, please give it a thumbs up to let me know and I'll see you again in the next one.